Hello, hello. Welcome to Surmax Online Book Festival. I am LaShonda Hoffman, your host for today. And I'm super excited to be back for panel section two, um, all about children books, middle grade books, and young adult books. We got some amazing authors here who's going to be sharing their experiences with us. I'm super excited to be back. If you missed the debut authors, make sure you go check out the replay. They gave so many great nuggets, and I know these ladies today are going to get some nuggets. So let's just welcome them on in. Our last one just came in, so yeah, we're ready, ladies. We are ready. Let's go. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so today we have with us Miss T.M. Moody. Ms. Meg Dindler, Dindler, I hope I'm saying that right, Ms. Janet Ruth Heller, Ms. Lakeisha, Lakeisha Atchison, Debbie Maber Cooper, I'm just Cooper. missing my Cooper, and Ms. Phyllis Willer, my buddy, she made it, yay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming with us today and being on this panel. I know it's a Saturday and it's early and you want to do other things, but I truly appreciate you coming and sharing time with us today. My first question I always ask is to tell us about you and your writing experience. So we're gonna start with TM. Please tell us who you are, TM. I've known her, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Since I've been on, on Sora Meg, since I started Sora Meg, before Sora Meg, I think she's one of my <laughs> first people I ever met online and see how long our friendship is. So great to yes. be here. Well, thank you for having me. Um, and so most people might know me as my other name, <laughs> Taora Ta Moody. So I've been writing um, Cozy Mysteries and Mysteries as Taora Moody for about 10 years. And last year in 2022, I decided to take a break and I jumped into uh, what I would call uh, chapter books for children. Mm -hmm. So that's T.M. Moody is my pen name for that. All right. Um, so Meg, tell us a little bit about you. Um, I've been doing freelance writing since the 90s. Um, I currently have a middle grade book series. Um, that's the first one <laughs> about alien cats. <laughs> So the sixth one in that series just came out. There's two dog books that go with it. Um, I also write for adults, and I work as an editor and proofreader for some independent publishers and sometimes just indie authors themselves. Okay. Ms. Janet? Uh, I started publishing when I was in first grade. My teacher liked a poem that I wrote so much that she did art it off for the whole class, mm -hmm. and that really hooked me. So uh, I've published... Uh, an award-winning picture book for children about bullying, uh, a middle grade book for children, and I have all sorts of other manuscripts. Uh, and I also have published five books for adults. So I, uh, I write just about anything that anybody can write, and so I welcome your questions. All right, Miss Lakeisha. Hi, everybody. Um, I am uh, Creative Words is my pseudonym. Um, I've been writing for about over a year now. Um, the Holy Spirit set me down um, and instructed me to write. And um, I also write adult books. So adult books, is um, two of them is called uh, Writing Your Way Through Breakthrough. It's actually a trilogy. The third installment is coming out next year. But of the children's books, uh, two of them, the first one is called A Tale of the Holy Trinity. Um, excuse me, The Twinkle Mystery, A Tale of the Holy Trinity. And the second one is called Through Abba's Eyes, uh, A Child's per Perspective. Um, the first book is based on Psalms 23, and the second book is based off of Galatians 5.22. All right, Ms. Debbie. Hi, I'm Debbie. I'm originally from England and somehow ended up here in St. Louis. Um, I write a YA fantasy saga. I'm on writing book 11 at the moment, the pause saga, about... Um, an international organization of shapeshifters with um, institutes hidden around the globe. I also have published, written and published a few, a few children's picture books, including this one, Adown of the, Adown of the Earth Dragon and some mm -hmm. others. And that's, um, in addition to that, I'm also an editor and I also write puzzles for puzzle magazines. So that's me. All right, thank you. And our last guest is Miss Fearless. Hello. Go ahead, Phyllis. I uh, 
I've been a writer all my life, but mostly it's been technical things. Like, uh, you know, I was an engineer and doing some technical writing. I also uh, was a newspaper reporter for five and a half years at the beginning of my adulthood. But I always wanted to write a children's book. And so um, I picked up that dream when I was 55 years old. Yeah, I'm 71 now. So it's, uh, I've been learning to write fiction. I've served as a publisher of other people's fiction for five years. I've uh, been an editor during this time. And um, so finally, uh, I'm, I'm producing my children's books. So this is uh, a chapter book series. Let's see. Can you see it? There we go. Good to see. Not very long. <laughs> so um, it's a time travel fantasy story. And I'm aiming at homeschoolers. Okay, so Phyllis said why she wanted to write in this genre. What did you, how about you all? Why did you choose this genre to write in? We'll go Ty, we'll go in the same order. Don't okay, <laughs> I'm sure. So I've always wanted to write for children. Um, so when I decided to take a break from writing mysteries, I kind of researched the age group that I want to write in. I didn't necessarily want to do a children's book with pictures and I also didn't want to write too much of a, a book for young adults. So I decided to stick with the middle grades chapter books and I also did nonfiction. So I have four in the series now. They're four books. They are about African-American history. So I decided to concentrate. I have an engineering background. I also have been a web developer. So I have a love for STEM. So I decided to focus on uh, different people from history in the STEM backgrounds. So it was kind of fun for me just to do the research for people. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think the biggest thing when you write for adults is learning how to write for a, a different, a long, younger age group. So mm -hmm. for me, I just took it as a challenge. Um, and I also got to write, uh, work with a really cool um, illustrator. So he's um, helped me illustrate all the people give them their own kind of look and feel. So I love that. That's pretty different from um, writing a chapter book or mm -hmm. a book for an adult. So I just enjoyed the process. And I actually have another one coming out in February. So I'm going to keep it going. My goal is to still write, you know, for my adult crowd, but then do one book a year as Tia Moody. So that's kind of a, just a new challenge to take on. And I love history. So. Yeah, you're going to have your plate full. That's a lot. Miss <laughs> Meg, what about you? Um, you know, I think I have some picture books that I've written, but not published as well. I was a teacher, an elementary school teacher, a middle school teacher. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, you know, kind of the books that I was very involved in for a lot of years and appreciated. Um, and when I started the little short stories about my bizarre cat Kimba and how she's probably an alien, I did not know that that was going to end up being a six book series and have the dog books and all of that attached to it. Um, I also have a, a fairy tale series that I wrote. Uh, I don't remember who it was that said something about in first grade. I wrote it in fifth grade for a picture book thing that our teacher had us do and it's been adapted. Um, I do have two adult novels and yes, it's, you have to totally change your <laughs> mindset when you do that. But I think the, whoever the story is for gets you there you know, who is this story for? I've often thought I was writing a YA book and it's turned out to be an adult book because what it's about is not a YA thing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's, a, it's an adult thing um, or it's for middle grade. It's it's a kid's thing. I think the story gets you to what it is you're writing. Yeah, who's I it. For? Who's going to care? <laughs> who's going to want to read it? <laughs> yeah, I found that out the difference between um, middle grade and young adult. I was at a conference and they explained that a lot. It really helped a lot because I didn't know who my little book was for. So that's that was good to know. Um, Miss Janet, what about you? I started writing books for my nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm the oldest of five kids. So I have a lot of nieces and nephews and now great nieces and nephews. So um, I write a lot for them. Sometimes I get their names into the book. Sometimes I, but they're, they're not really necessarily about them but uh sometimes i'm rewriting my own life to give things a happy ending that didn't have a happy ending in my own life for example i, I was badly bullied when i was in elementary school so i wrote my book how the moon regained her shelf 
how the moon regained your shape to help other children so that they wouldn't have to suffer the way that I did. Um, Cause I, you know, it took me a long time to recover from that bullying. Mm. So I'm, I'm hoping that when they read kids and their families and their teachers or whatever, read my book, that it'll give them some insight and prevent them from being as damaged as I was by the experience. Mm -hmm. Ms. Lakeisha? Yes. Um, when I started writing, I, well, I've never written a children's book or anything of that nature. Um, I'm a, I'm a 15 year Navy vet. Um, I'm 38 years old. And when I started writing um, the trilogy, writing your way through breakthrough, I, I, I didn't even know the children's books was even in me. I had no idea. Um, but when it, when it birthed, it, it birthed because I have three nephews and I used to sing them. Um, <clears throat> I used to sing them twinkle, twinkle little star um, when they was, when they was coming up. And so that's how the first one came about a twinkle mystery of tale of the Holy Trinity. And then through Abba's, eye, through Abba's eyes, a child's perspective, that one's based off myself and learning about who, uh, who Abba is and looking at him, looking at myself through his eyes and not my own. So it's to educate young children from ages four to 10 about the Holy Trinity and who they are and who they, who they, who they still is. Ms. Debbie. Oh. <laughs> um. Hold, hold on, sorry about that. Go ahead, it's, it's life happens. <laughs> life happens. Um, so um, I, I'm a discovery writer. So mm -hmm. when I started writing pause, I had no idea who I was writing for. I mm -hmm. didn't know if this was going to be an adult book or a YA book or whatever. It's, it's the age of the protagonist that she starts, actually just starts off at the very beginning. She's only 10 years old and then she ages up. So she's about 14 through the most group, and it's we age up through the series that made it um YA more than more than anything any planning on my behalf path. But I really felt for what Janet just said because yeah, a lot of the things that my main character, Miri, goes through at the beginning are based on my own experiences. I also was horribly bullied as a kid, and we have a you see, but I I have a lot of um, inciting scene early in the book where she uses her magic in order to get her little bit of revenge at, on her high school bullet, bullies. And it's just like, this is what I couldn't do. I couldn't become a cat and, you know, run off and not, I had to, I had to deal with my world. But in my fantasy world, I can make this stuff happen. The real the stuff I, you know, and it's, I don't know, it's, it's empowering. It's what, you know, it did. And then the children's books, they just came. I don't know. The characters just came. I, most of my children's books started as for stories that I wrote for anthologies. And then I redeveloped into, into children's picture books because they, they fit the themes and things. So it's, I don't know. I'm much more, it's not so much of a plan as it's, what happened? And I, you know, live in this fantasy world and I have to write it out, you know? I'm loving all you guys' um, reasons for doing this. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say anything else, Phyllis, before we go to the next question? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm writing children's books because I just really felt the call or felt the, the dream or whatever it was from the age of about 13. Mm -hmm. So uh, I tried writing one when I was about 30 and I I could tell, you know, I said, I didn't show it to any writers because I didn't know you did that. And this was so long ago that, that I typed it on a typewriter and put it in a box and sent it to a, uh, a New York publisher, mm -hmm. Athenaeum, who very kindly wrote back and said, well, it seems promising, <laughs> but, but, but I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I think I need to live my life a little more. Mm. And um, so I did that. Mm. That was, um, I want to talk about writing communities. And I know one of my, I talk about her all the time, so her ears probably burn all the time. 
Miss Beverly Jenkins, when I first had a conversation with her about writing historicals and stuff, and she's like, baby, you haven't lived. <laughs> I think I was in my late 20, like, like probably about 20, 30, almost 30. And she said, you need to live a little bit. When you hit your 40s, then you're going to write some really good stories. And at first I was like, 40? You know, 40 seemed old back then. <laughs> Till you hit for me. And so I was like, oh man, you know, but she was right. I hadn't became, a, I was just a new mommy. So I was learning about being motherhood and being a new wife and stuff. And so she was right really on, you know, what I wanted to put into my stories about relationships and stuff like that. I've learned that my writing community is so important to me. And I'm wondering, do you all have writing communities that you, that you deal with? Are you a solo uh, writer by yourself? Was was same same order. <laughs> um, so not necessarily for the children's books, but for the adult books, I am in a couple of writing communities. Mm -hmm. I think I am in a couple of children's book authors, uh, children's books on Facebook. Um, but I haven't um, reached out to anyone in particular to share my writing. But you know, mm -hmm. I I do this. I freelance. I work with a lot of authors to pass. 20 years, um, you know, we've known each other for a long time. So it's, I have a lot of children's book authors that come to me that I work with them to make their vision come to life. Um, but community wise for these books, it probably was more of a solo project because it was just something fun to do. And I wanted to pursue something different. So mm -hmm. what about you, Meg? I definitely have a critique group. Um, mm -hmm. I've been meeting with them. Oh, I don't know. Okay, going on eight, nine years now. And actually, most of them are write only adult things. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't matter because writing is writing. I mean, sometimes I have to say, yes, I have to repeat that because it's kids and they might not get it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's some little disconnects there. Um, but for the most part, you know, they're calling me on my adverbs. They're calling me on <laughs> my tense changes and whatever. Um, and I think that group has been through three or four at least of my books from beginning to end you know before I published them five pages a week on we go um and it's uh, you definitely need to get other people's eyes on your stuff before you put it out there I totally agree definitely definitely, definitely. and yeah there's SCBWI I've been a member of that for 10 years and online groups like that um I love the webinars SCBWI has been doing for writers for free they really upped that game during COVID, I think it started and they've stayed there of just all the time, free workshops, free workshops with really, you know, Judy Bloom and <laughs> mm -hmm. impressive people, not just whoever, you know, really impressive writers that you can learn from. Um, and I do those whenever they offer them, I'm right there. So SCBWI is the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. Thank you, Ms. Phyllis. <laughs> Janet, what about you? Yes, I'm, I'm also a member of the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, and its conferences and its newsletters are very helpful. I found out about my first, the publisher for my book about bullying from um, uh, an email listserv that the state of Michigan runs for members of the SCBWI in, in the state. And it, it said that... Um, Arborville Publishing was looking for manuscripts for children's picture books. So I sent two and they accepted one. So, um, and, and after I published that book, I set up some, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a former college professor. So I knew some people from my college teaching. And I also uh, met other people when I was doing book appearances for my book and in bookstores and libraries and conferences. So I invited, uh, people who were interested in writing to join um, a, a writer's group. And uh, I wound up setting up two writer's groups, one for my children's manuscripts, another for my manuscripts for adults. And that's been very helpful to me in writing both books for adults and books for children. I get really good feedback. It, it's important to have people in the group who aren't afraid to give you criticism but who give it in a very constructive and friendly way so that you don't feel devastated by it. Yes, I agree, I agree. Ms. Lakeisha? Uh, yes, um, I, I was not aware of writing communities. Um, I, was, I was homeless for two years. 
Um, I just, the Lord just blessed me with my place here in October. Um, my rent is paid for nine months, didn't put a, a dime down or anything. So um, I'm just now getting into this, this writing space and learning about the different communities. And Miss Phyllis, I appreciate you letting me know what CW, uh, CWI was because I, I had no idea. So <laughs> I'm, I'm learning um, as a new author um, to the, the different communities and stuff. And, um, and I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm blessed and I'm thankful and I'm grateful. Gratitude. Miss Debbie. Oh, I've had many, many different groups and things since I started this journey, which is over like 10 years ago or something now. First of all, first group would be my NaNoWriMo group, my local my local um, national novel writing group. We're actually having our final party to tomorrow. And, and those, are, those are my first writing friends, because when I before I was published, before anything, they were the people who would cheer me on to actually write. Then... Um, I had a local, there was a, used to be a local um, indie bookstore near me that had um, a, a little, a small writing group that used to meet occasionally once a month. And after I finished my first book, I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> so one day I decided to go over there and join this group and I read them my prologue and they liked it and they encouraged me and they became my first group of indie author friends, some of, some of whom are still friends of mine today. The group itself sadly doesn't work anymore, but that was that. Um, in terms of the actual writing critique, I have a critique partner, a, friend, a good friend of mine in England who's also a writer, and we swap manuscripts back and forth, and we're very critical of each other. So I'm going through his stuff now, and he just recently went through mine, and we we write different genres. It doesn't matter because it's all about the writing, not about the thing, and I have also have beta readers who do read in my genre who go through my stuff and give me criticism work and I've been working with them for a while I'm on a book 10 of my series so at this point the people <laughs> people are well there um online there's so many good online groups most of the groups online I find are useful for uh, promotion and marketing rather than um rather than the writing part, rather, not, not the writing part of it, but more the promoting side, because you need author friends so that you can share your, your stuff with other people and then newsletters, that you can find out about events, you can do a thing. It's the, it's the networking that it's done, mostly through Facebook for me, and I'm involved in a load, a ton of different groups of that, of that kind. So, yeah. All right, thank you. What about you, Miss Phyllis? What is your writing community? <laughs> <laughs> well, LaShonda is in this writer's group that we uh, started about uh, 10 years ago, right, LaShonda? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really more of an encouragement group and whatever you need group, then uh, we're not sitting around swapping chapters very often, but if we need that, we are. So I, I find it, and also we're holding each other accountable. We, ha we talked on, uh, Facebook chat every Monday and say what our goals for the week are. And then the following Monday, we can come back and say, well, I didn't quite make that, but I, at least I did blah, 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 whatever it was. So that, that helps, uh, helps you be productive if you're, if you have goals that you have set. But on the subject of actually who's looking at my work these days, I have found it more helpful at this point in my career to hire an editor who, uh, cause it's just faster. You know, you, you go through a, these critique groups, you know, five pages a week or whatever. It's just, um, and also you, you're getting uh, somebody with expertise, assuming you've found somebody that you like. So uh, that's what I'm doing with it. Is, and also, you know, my books are short. So hiring an editor to go through it doesn't cost that much. It's not like a great big old fat novel for it's, you know a thousand or two two thousand dollars or something. That's good. I'm glad you talked about the editing side too, because um, we talked about a little bit of that in the debut one. Is um, what I've learned with uh, editing is finding someone that gets you. You know, it's 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 okay to pay somebody to edit your book, but you want them to get your story. 
um, and that help and and help you improve the story in your writing skills. You know, it's, it's easy to to mark stuff up and, and that doesn't help you as a writer. So I always tell people find somebody who gets your writing because they don't get your writing. They can't help improve it, and they definitely can't teach you anything. Um, some of you talked about bullying in your in your book so what other themes do you explore in your books uh, so you're on me again right <laughs> so <laughs> mine's our history related so mm -hmm. uh, of course i'm delving into people's backgrounds for example uh, i'm working on a civil rights book that's the one coming out in february so i'm looking at different aspects of the civil rights movement starting all the way back from frederick Douglass. Um, going into even in the, the little bit of time period up until you get to the major civil rights movement in the 60s. So I'm showing, showcasing people and their struggles with what they went through in, a, in terms that, you know, a child can read and understand what abolitionist was to up to this, up to the, the current day of what things we still deal with. So mine's are more from a person the person's point of view they're biographical mm -hmm. so yeah okay i want to know all the questions about how you pick these people but i guess i'll i'll talk to you afterward <laughs> <laughs> meg what about you um you know a lot of the middle grade books i have are just fun and kind of silly um but i do have the tigran chronicles that i have um which is a ya book i'll grab only talking but it, it really was inspired the main character is a human tiger hybrid genetically created okay. and it's 200 years in the future where we've done this like to be helpers but it all goes bad of course um <laughs> but what i'm really looking at i volunteer at a place called turpentine creek wildlife refuge um they're actually in the news quite a bit now with all the rescues that they've been doing for big cats um and bobcats and things like that and the things that i've learned working there about how we treat animals as human beings in this world. Um, and we're getting lots of legislation that's better. But I, you know, my question kind of to myself was, what if they were part human? Would we be better? Mm -hmm. Would we treat them better? And sadly, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but that really sort of inspired it is this work that I was doing and these things I was learning about, you know, your neighbor could have a tiger in his backyard and it's probably legal. Mm. That's not terrifying at all. And, um, you know, just taking that in, into a story that then, how can we look at that from the side? Mm -hmm. Instead of just, I'm going to write a book about this exact thing. How can we look at it from the side of this character who's being treated the same way we treat tigers in America and having their children taken from them? And, you know, mm -hmm. if you put a human twist to it, does that help us understand better what it is mm -hmm. we're up to as human beings? Oh, that's, that's really deep there. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Janet? What are you thinking um, for? I, I also have a, a children's book called The Passover Surprise. Um, I come from the Jewish tradition and it's, but it's, the book is about the Jewish life, but it's also very much about sibling rivalry. I'm the oldest of five kids and it was a very complicated family. And some of the kids were favorites of the parents and others weren't. And it, I, in, in my book, there's a struggle between the main character, who's a little girl named Lisa, and her brother, Jonathan, and the father favors Jonathan, but Lisa, with the help of friends and her mom, winds up talking to her dad about um, how much, she, her father gives Jonathan a stamp album that they the two kids were competing over, and Lisa explains to her dad that, that she would really like a stamp album, too and that the hobby that he had encouraged them to do was very important to her. So um, the, the, the book is about how the family resolves this situation. And in a way it's rewriting a very similar situation in my own family that did not have a happy ending for me. So um, again, I'm trying to help other families to deal with situations like sibling rivalry. I also have a bunch of, uh, um, I have books for adults about nature, uh, about um, becoming a woman in, in the modern age, 
Uh, I also publish scholarly work. I, I used to be a, uh, an English and women's studies professor. So I have a lot of scholarly articles and, and a book um, about that. So I, I publish about a wide variety of situations. I have a play about um, two people struggling over one person refusing to stop talking on her cell phone and disrupting the other. So I, I, I write about a lot of different topics. Interesting. That's really interesting. Lakeisha? Yes. Um, first of all, I apologize for the background noise. I, I don't have any control over my neighbors. Uh, sorry about <laughs> that. <laughs> but um, the, the books that, you know, the Holy Spirit and I partner on was to, to educate the masses. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And I know growing up as a child, I I did not know of really like you, you hear words about the Holy Trinity, but you don't you don't know really who they are. Yes, you know, you got God, you have Jesus Christ, but nobody really hardly ever really talked about the Holy Spirit. And it's three of them. So the the books that were written were to educate the children at a young age, because, again, at 38 years old, I'm just now finding out these things. Um, I again, I did not know. So. The, the sooner I feel as though, or I believe um, by faith that the sooner that the kids know, then the, the better they will be able to overcome such things as narcissism abuse, um, molestation, um, being bullied, and so on and so forth, because there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You just got to find that light. All right. Okay. Miss Debbie? Oof. Um, <laughs> well... <laughs> It's, it's rather different between the two kinds of things I write. Um, pause, as well as the bullying, as we've already said, te deals with some very tough subjects. Um, I have abuse in there. I have addiction in there. I have racism in there. There's a lot of different subjects based on the subject. It, I'm writing book 11. There's a lot, there's a lot in there. Um, the children's books, however, usually have a smaller, like take this, this is, this is Adana. She's my little earth dragon. Um, she's a little brown earth dragon. She thinks that she um, can't do anything, that all the other dragons that are the fire dragons and the water dragons and the air dragons all have powers that she doesn't have. And so she doesn't think she's worth anything. Mm. And in this book, a big giant is coming and he's stomping on all the, he's stomping on all the flowers and things. And she's not happy with that. And she's the only one of all the dragons who is able to stop him. So she proves that even though she's small and not so powerful, she can do big things. And that's probably my favorite in terms of a message book. It's probably my favorite. It's also got a little bit of environmental, don't stump on nature, and mm -hmm. also that you can do things. You even if you're small, you you have your you have your own powers. I so. love that because I'm small and I believe that. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis, what about you? What are, what themes do you explore? Well, my uh, protagonist for this uh, chapter book series is 11 years old, and he makes his name is Jake. He makes a lot of mistakes. He uh, he's a, afraid of things. He's uh, you know and things are always going wrong for him. So uh, each book is really a kind of a character study. Like in the first book, he uh, tells a lie at the beginning, and it just kind of dogs him all the way through until he finally he's able to apologize for it at the end. So uh, meanwhile, there's a lot of other stuff going on. It's really, you know, time travel and uh, chasing people all, uh, all over time and space and stuff like that. But uh, so um, in the second book, he's he's really afraid. And uh, he, in various uh, situations, needs to overcome his fears and do something brave. So um, in the third book, which I'm just finishing, is, is more about loyalty. So, so um, it, the idea is to, when, you know, when a, a kid chapter book reader is like eight to, eight to 11, that's the target age. So they're old enough to, to be thinking about char character uh, traits and things like that. Okay. If you're watching this with us, please feel free to um, put you some questions in the comments. I will definitely pull them up and ask them for you. Uh, my next question is, what's the most rewarding aspect of your writing career so far? 
and we're going to go backwards and we're going to start with Phyllis. <laughs> well, I was thrilled to discover that I have a fan. <laughs> <laughs> She's 10 years old. <laughs> this was at a homeschool convention last year. She was just, she, her, she bugged her parents to buy my book. This is this uh, time travel book, The Dog Snatcher. And, she, and then she um, uh, went home and was, I mean, this is a two day conference, right? So that the, the night she went, went home and was reading it to them in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day, well, she hadn't finished it yet, but she was just uh, hanging around my table. <laughs> you had a group. Funny thing. I thought, oh, <laughs> this is what a celebrity feels like. Yeah, yeah. I was looking googly eyed at him, you know, like, <laughs> like that was pretty cool. <laughs> I love that story. That's great. What about you, David? <laughs> Mm. Two moments like that, like that also with fans that made me really, really love this. Um, first of all, I had a kid stop me in the street one day and say, hello, Joey's mom, because Joey's my son. Um, I like your book. <laughs> like, okay, and I thought, oh, oh that's, that's great, you know. <laughs> and then um, also, again, a few years back, when I was doing a big author event so with loads and loads of famous authors and stuff, the one person who sought, sought me out with their very worn copy of Pause to, for me to sign, right? not buying from me then, but they, they'd obviously read it many times and they wanted me to sign their copy. That's, that, you know, that, that, that blew me away. Mm -hmm. It really blew me away that someone, you know, could do that. Yeah, that's the that's the whole dream is to find that find those super fans who, who get your book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lakeisha, what about you? Um, for me, um, it was just completing the books. Um, again, I this was something I never imagined for myself. When I was a kid, I wanted to be the first woman in the NBA. Like those were those were my dreams. Those were 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 was what my, I wanted to do. And even with my background as a mil um, in the military, it's this this holds so much more value to me. The completing and putting the knowledge out there for people um, versus uh, anything else. So I'm I'm just grateful and have much gratitude that it was it was completed and that the knowledge is out there. Mm -hmm. Miss Janet. It's been very healing for me after all the bullying I suffered <laughs> to go to schools and talk about my book and teachers tell me after I visited that children are more likely to report bullying mm -hmm. and that they understand it better. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's been very healing to go to conferences and book fairs and libraries and, and, and talk about this. I also did research on other books about bullying for kids. And that taught me a lot uh, too. And I, I published an article about it. Um, a, a lot of psychologists and other scholars have, have studied it. So I, I use insights from their research to discuss good books for children uh, about bullying that, that, that can help them. So um, the, the journey has been very healing for me. Miss me. Um, obviously it's the, it's the fan moments are the huge thing. I, we'll put Max up here. Max is our dog. He really did spend all night out in the woods. <laughs> And he's, despite all my cat books, I think he's my bestseller. And I had a little boy come up. I tend to do the same events, you know, year after year. I'm at the same in-person things and had gotten it a year prior. And his mom said he'd read it nine times. Wow. And that's <laughs> your like, woohoo moment. Or anytime a child pulls out their own pocketbook, mm. their own money, mm -hmm. get the next book in the series you know they've got Kimba and they want to get heroes that's the book they're going to read the next and when they're putting their own money out on the table <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> because you know that what you you know the year that you spent on that book was worth it if they're willing to shell out their own hard-earned or hard you know 
allowance, to whatever mm-hmm. money to buy it. That's, that is always just an awesome moment for me. I always mm-hmm. wanted to just, like, hand it to him. You don't have to pay me, but <laughs> my husband runs the business part. He would not be. <laughs> that is so cool. I think that I try to think about when I was a little kid, I bought books. I bought the little house on Prairie series. I would go hunt them down and buy each one, but to actually meet the author who wrote the book as a kid would probably would have been, fabulous. So, I know how I am with a, when I, as an adult, but as a kid to meet an author that's ri- written something you read. So that is so cool. That's priceless. Yep. Priceless. What about you, Tim? Um, yeah. So for me, I guess would be last year. So I will say being a new author in this genre, I kind of struggled with how to do the promotion and get the book out there. So when um, someone emailed me out of the blue, when I looked, I realized she was a uh, director of an organization for girls. And she, she she sent me an email. She said, I would like to buy 300 copies of your book. Oh. As an adult author, I've never had that happen <laughs> with my adult book. So I was like, what? And I read this email several times. <laughs> so she didn't come back to me two times for batch copies of the book. Wow. Um, so I think that's just the big thing. I was, and I was just sitting there wondering, how am I going to promote this book? Because I have a pen name now. I have to, you know, set up different social media. So that was just nice to know that someone out of the blue happened to see my book on Amazon. And they said, um, hey, I want all these copies of the books. And they gifted it to the girls last Christmas. So that's so amazing. <laughs> I love that story so much. And you went right into my question because that is the question that I get because I work with a lot of romance authors, but every now and then I get uh, children book authors. And that's the question I want to ask you all is how, what advice would you give someone who's about to release their first book? What, what should they be doing? How can they get their books out there in front of the, I always say the parents because very rare to get in front of the children to get your books in front of them where they buy 300 books. How do you do that? I so we, we'll start with Meg since TM. <laughs> and that is the question of, of always. Mm-hmm. It's very hard with middle grade books. I have actually read many, many things as they are. They are the hardest to sell. Tis mm-hmm. that middle grade because you're not selling to the kids for the most part. Um, I mean, if you're in with Scholastic and not making any money, but, you know, your book's getting out there because <laughs> they take <laughs> money. But, but, you know, if you're at the book fairs, that's great. But for the most part, you're not. That's going to be, you know, 0.1 maybe percent of people who are publishing. Um, I In-person events, I have found is the best because if you're there in front of them, especially if, you know, I think most of us here, you know, we're not with big publishers. We're not getting that extra promotion or stamp of approval um, that comes with being published traditionally. That's sort of a, yeah, this is automatically a good book because you've done that, which isn't true at all. But (laughs) that's the (laughs) perception from the buyer that, Mm -hmm. you know, you need that stamp of approval. But if you're there and they meet you and the parent is there with the child or the grandma, the grandma will say, do you want this book? And the kid, you know, is looking at it and you can talk to them. And I think that's what does the best for me consistently. I mean, I run ads through Amazon and I do all kinds of other things, but consistently it's that face to face. Okay. You're not a crazy person. I can see you, (laughs) you know, you seem intelligent. This book looks good. They can look at the book physically, open it, read it aloud to their parents um, so that's always my big, biggest piece of advice for children's writers is to get yourself in front of people as much as you can face to face. I think that's great because um, especially now, since we come out of COVID, a lot of authors use that as excuse. They shut down. They weren't doing nothing. They weren't going anywhere. And now everybody's coming back out. And I've noticed that a lot of authors like, oh, I'm not doing events. And I'm like, well, how are you reaching your audience if you're not doing events? You know, so I think that's excellent advice. What about you, Miss Janet? Okay, I, I have a question for you. Because when you first asked the question, I thought you meant how do you get it in front of editors? Do you mean how to get it in front of the audience or how to get it in front of editors? I'm talking about promoting that first book. Okay, pro- okay. Yeah. okay. Um, 
I consulted other writers and of course the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators was very helpful also. Um, in the state of Michigan, the SCBWI sponsors authors events for people who've published books like me. So um, you can sign up for these events and they're all over the state. Uh, and you can sign up for the ones that are at times that are convenient for you. And um, then you get to market your books at a bookstore or sometimes a, a fair or some, you know, or, or some sort of arts and culture event. And that's very helpful. I've arranged um, autographing at bookstores and libraries and conferences. And I speak at a lot of conferences um, for teachers because I, as a, as a college professor and as a published author, I have a lot to share with um, teachers. So I often speak for the Michigan Reading Association or the National Council of Teachers of English, um, Michigan College English Association, um, groups, groups like that. Um, basically, you you need to research this stuff in the same way that you would if you were searching for a job. You know, employers don't come knocking on your door and in the same way that uh, the audience doesn't come to your door and say, hi, Janet, I want your book. You, you have to really go out there and try to see and, and communicate with people in any way possible. So, you know, I would, I would contact your local libraries, bookstores, speak at any conference that you're uh, um, that you're appropriate for. Um, here in Kalamazoo, we have the Ladies Library Association. I've given some readings there. The, the public libraries sponsor uh, authors events. So I've also uh, done readings there. Just any organization you can think of, your, your church group, your synagogue, your mosque, you know, wh whatever. Um, figure out a way that, that you can do a meaningful event in the organizations that you belong to and talk to other writers and see what they're doing. The, the main thing is just to keep, you know, I, I have a website and I, uh, I discuss my work and I publish a, a blog on, on that website. I also have a Facebook and LinkedIn and X account. Um, so people can find out about me that way. And Amazon Author Central is another way to get your book out there. Those were some great tips. And I like that you, you did different things. You talked to organizations and things. Sometimes people miss the organizations. It, you'd be surprised how many things organizations you belong to. And if you belong to a church, get them to start a book club. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get in the churches, you know, so try different things instead of just a regular going to the bookstore and thinking you can sell that way, especially as an indie author. It's hard to get into the bookstores. So don't sleep on those libraries. I really like that you use the libraries and the associations for the libraries. So don't miss those. Um, Miss Lakeisha, you have any advice for a new author? Yes, ma'am. Uh, first of all, Miss Janet, thank you so much for your knowledge nuggets. Again, yeah. Coming into this as a as a new author myself um, with the, the children's books, I, I knew nothing about none of those. And I'm in Detroit, Michigan. So um, again, thank you and gratitude for that. Um, but uh, once what I did was once I got into a, a stable environment, I, I ended up getting into a lot of Christian groups, um, speaking to the Christian to the Christian parents, because my 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 thing is is faith based. Um, all of it's faith based. So. I, I went right after my target audience. That's what I did. All right, baby. Um, well, um, I've got two different sides here again. The YA, the YA side is pretty much like the adult side. As in most, actually it's mostly adults that read YA. So I'm um, that, that I mostly sell eBooks and audiobooks online through Amazon. And that's, and that's where my advertising and my clout go, go for, for, for my YA series. For my children's books, it's almost entirely in person at, the, at events. 
um, I do I do sell some of my wives books at my events too, but that's not my predominant sale. There, my predominant is for my picture books. The thing one people thing haven't mentioned here is also try and get into schools. Some of the best events you can have is to go into the school. The the absolute best event I ever ever did was when I was invited um, to the um, to the like the book fair evening conference evening at my local middle school. I sold so many books that night because the key there is it's not just the kids there, it's the parents with the kids with the money who came in and bought, and bought those books. If you can do that, if you can be author at residence for a literacy evening or anything, or just, you know, but still that, that kid I told you about, you know, who met me in the street, you know, he probably saw me went into his um, into his classroom at one point and then you know carried on buying and reading my books years later so yeah definitely schools is another one I do local events there's like a local toy event here I do that I can sell a lot of books there I from on the site on the, I'm a fantasy writer so I do um conventions mm -hmm. and not just sell books and some sometimes in fact I don't sell books I just go and do panels I get becoming a guest at, at, at um, events I well you know I go flew down for a couple of years to Ravencon in uh, in uh, Virginia because I was invited as a guest it's lovely it's lovely to meet people make connections do have fun with it don't do one of my things I always say with about promotion is don't do something that you don't find fun I have another author friend, a local author friend. I'm I'm kind I'm fairly introverted myself and I don't like people so much, but he hated it. He came and he did it and he sat behind the table in the convention and hated every moment it. It wasn't fun for him. He might have sold a few books, but don't do that. Don't do so if it really is really hard for you, find other ways, find other things to do because it's not worth it. Part of this, you're not going to sell so much at these events that you'll make up that, make that, make up that much. This is not a, this is, this is not big money here at any event. It is. This is not big money here. So, so if it makes you really uncomfortable, don't do it. Find the things you do that that make you comfortable. You have fun doing. You know, it's like as you say. Blogs are not such a big thing now, but when they used to be, it was like, yeah, only write, do stuff like that if you enjoy doing it. So, yeah, I do Facebook a lot because I like Facebook. I do Instagram. I've abandoned X because no one's there anymore, right? <laughs> Whatever you do, you do what you find to. I do my newsletter. Newsletters, not so much for children's books, but if you do write YA and adult, Newsbuffers help you so much, and especially in the sense that you, um, if you can swap with other authors, so you get their book, you sh show their books, and they show yours. That's how how the sales come. I do periodic on my YA series. I do periodic sales once every few months on my series, and get a mega ton of things. I used to do a lot of paid ads. I don't do as many now because I'm finding the, the newsletter swaps work just as well as the ads at the moment. I think we're all how added story origin i love story origin and they i was in the beginning of that i encourage people to join story origin, origin story origin build your newsletter and do swaps it really helps if you've got older it's, le it's less important for small kids and small small kids stuff um and that's it. <laughs> man that was so many nuggets if you didn't get all them <laughs> she gave a bunch of nuggets and she gave my number one nugget that I tell all my clients is to do the fun stuff because the fun stuff is what you'll continue doing. If it's not fun, guess where it goes? It's in the back. And then you go, oh, was I supposed to do that? You, you forget about it because it's not fun and you're not going to do it. Um, Miss Phyllis, what is your little tip for us? <laughs> Well, all my good advice has already been given by everybody else. <laughs> Give us one. Give us one tip. Well, I, you know, I'm targeting the homeschool crowd. Okay. And they, the way you sell to them is you go to their conventions. Hmm. That's how you do it. And their conventions, unfortunately, are not cheap. Mm. But uh, if you have something that is just perfect for them, and you go to, you, you kind of um, get become better known as you keep doing it. 
So, uh, you know, there are people who've really been really persistent about going to these, and then they just are to totally have a huge following. Okay. So, uh, there's a guy named S.D. Smith who writes books about rabbits with swords. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying yeah. to see how they pick one up. <laughs> and that's his, uh, how he did it. He just went to lots and lots of conventions, kept selling the books. They're all, um, you know, indie published. Oh, I do have one other bit of advice. Okay. That is, if you can uh, get yourself some awards, you know, there's, seeing as how indies can't, uh, be considered for the Newberry, the Caldecott, the what are the, the normal awards. Uh, these other awards have sprung up. And there's, uh, and, you know, in the Christian market, which is where I am, there's particularly, you know, so Sela Award, the Realm Award, whatever. Um, so if you can get a, uh, either be a finalist or actually get one of these awards. It, uh, you can put a little sticker on your book. And uh, when you're selling this book face to face, like you guys were talking about, you can say it's an award winning book. And that really uh, helps sell it because, you know, what do you call it? <laughs> Validation from somebody else by you. Oh, that was a very good tip. Thank you. <laughs> um, even, a, even a even a minor award will do that. You know, it means somebody else has read this book and liked it. Great. Um, so I I've got one last question, then we'll um, close out. But um, a couple of you talked about doing conventions and um, and and uh, vending and stuff, and I hate that. <laughs> I hate sitting behind the table, but. I know that if I'm going to do these type of books, that's where the market is. So I would love if anybody could offer some great vending tips. I've done panels, so I love doing the panels. I think that's what uh, Debbie was saying doing. I've been to my first, I went to two conference, two uh, Comic-Con conferences and did panels and was a moderator. So that was fabulous. But I said books. <laughs> so I would love some tips on sitting behind that table and selling your book. Well, you need to stand behind the table. Okay. And look them in the eye and ask them a question. As they're walking by, you get their attention. So you ask them a question like, are there readers at your house? Or, you know, uh, that's that's a pretty good one, actually. Because you want to sort out the people who uh, are not interested. Or are there, reader, are there child readers on your Christmas list? Or something like that. Because the ones who say no, well... They can keep walking, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jenny. Go ahead. Uh, I w uh, when I'm at, usually I'm at a table with a group of other children's book writers, mm -hmm. and I will say things like, and, and, and Phyllis is right, it helps to stand, mm -hmm. and I'll be holding up a copy of my book, and I'll say things like, we have great books for kids here, and it'll get them to come over. And at the society for children's book writers and illustrators tables the rule is you need to sort of share your marketing so you i won't just say good things about my books i'll say oh and you should also look at you know debbie's book or you should also look at meg's book you should also look at lakeisha's book you should also look at tm's book you should also look at phyllis's book. so mm -hmm. um you know or i'll say you know phyllis has a great book about x you know so if you're interested in that so it, it, it's good to sort of be cooperative with other writers like that. And then they return the favor, you know, um, but um, don't, don't be afraid to market yourself. And it's something you can learn. I'm an introvert, but I have learned to market my books because I care very much about them and I care about my readers and they feel that, you know, if you're sincere uh, mm -hmm. about it. You know, and I'll and I'll say, you know, things like this. This is an award winning book and it's won, you know, it, it's won a Children's Choices Award and it's won, you know, this award and it's won that award. Don't don't be afraid to say what you've accomplished. Um, women are often when, when we're brought up, we're often taught to 
be very uh, quiet and not to make scenes. And I mean, obviously you don't want to be violent, you know, but you, you have a right to say what you did and what you've accomplished and that's good. And women have a right to do that. We, we need to sort of defy those messages that our society gave us that we should stay in the background because we're women or because we're people of color or because we're Jewish or because, you know, we, we, we have a right to say what we think and to market our books and to be taken seriously. And I, I, I also think if, if people are shy, they can work with other people. I helped a friend who's sort of shy. And I helped her become more comfortable marketing her books. When she would have interviews, she used to be terrified. And I just sort of worked with her and I said, you know, you don't have to be terrified about this interview. Um, and this will help you sell your book and help you get, you know, word around about what you write. And you write such great stuff. You know, you have a right to be proud of it and just let that enthusiasm show th through. And now she doesn't call me every two days anymore about <laughs> how do I handle this and how do I, she's just learned how to do it. So it, it, it is something that, that, that you can, that you can overcome. Um, so I, I, I think that, um, we women, we people, you know, we, people of color, people of different religions, whatever your background is, whatever your ethnic background is, you have a right to be proud of that. And you have a right to share that with the world and don't let anybody keep you down. Well, thank you, Miss Janet. Those were good, good things. Uh, Meg, you want to share some vending tips for me? Because I need all you. It's nothing compared to all that, which is <laughs> on the more practical side. Um, I have bookmarks yeah. that go with all of the books or that are promotional. So if they're kind of hemming and hawing because you know they don't know who the heck you are or anything mm -hmm. about this book, whoosh, off it goes into their hand. And they can take that with them. They can look you up later. They might want to read on Kindle you know, and not want to buy the physical copy in front of you right there. So having something that they can take with them to find not just you, not just a business card, but that specific book, mm -hmm. you know, later on that they're interested in. I, at the moment, I have one for every single book and that's gotten out of hand. So I'm trying to combine the cat books onto one now because mm -hmm. 12 different bookmarks has gotten a little out of hand. But it's that, that idea that okay, they're interested in this book. And my husband's usually at the table with me. So he's digging through the pile and getting one to, you know, slide to me that I can <laughs> hand to them as they walk away. Um, you know, you need to have some way they can find you later. Mm -hmm. I love that too. I met some people that didn't have no paperwork, nothing. They just was just had their books. And I said, well, do you have a card, business card? Oh, we at work. We don't do that anymore. And I say, oh, wow. So how can mm -hmm. I get in touch with you later if I don't remember your name or your book? No. And I have people grab them me. all the time. <laughs> I've had people grab the, just even the business card all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That, I think I think paper stuff still is is important. Marketing, well, paper, marketing stuff is still important. You know, but I've just, got a, a postcard that I hand people that uh, shows it's about my newsletter freebie, which is a short story and has a nice cover. So that's what's on here. It says free short story. And then when you turn it over, you get instructions and a QR code, you know, about how to go sign up for my mm -hmm. newsletter. Yeah, I like I like that. That's a good idea too, because you you're giving them something to to test test you out versus them spending money. And if they like it, then they're gonna go go get the book because they saw them already. Right. And mm -hmm. it gets them on my newsletter list too, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I was just going to mention, if you have illustrations in your book, one of the things I've done, I have not done vending events yet, but I do have on my website, I, I have activity books that go with my book. So if you have like coloring pages or puzzles, okay. those are things I'm definitely going to mm -hmm. put on my vending table when I do do it. Um, and I also always put the book in the corner, just mm -hmm. rant it a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's a good tip too. What about you, Debbie? I know you got some good stuff there. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I also I also love bookmarks, and I have bookmarks for one for my my uh, poor saga, which I'll give to the I'll give to the adults and the older kids. And then I have one with a dragon on it. And I'll go up to little. I'll see the little kid. And this is the one time when they're actually marking to the child. 
hey, do you like dragons? <laughs> and I give them the dragon, the dragon bookmark and they show it and they're excited and they run off to their parents and say, look, dragon, dragon. And then they come back and sometimes they buy the book. And I've done that quite a lot. I also, along with the dragon book, someone said that, I also sell um, a coloring activity book that goes with this. And most often I'll sell both together because people that do that, that's just a little bit of extra thing. You already got your illustrated, already got your things. Get some black and white pictures, add some puzzles and things, make an activity book to go with your books because that gives them something else to sell at your table. Um, little th things. The other thing is, yes, yes, people like paper, but some people I've learned do not like paper anymore as well. So the other thing to do if you're making a nice big banner is put your QR codes on the banner as well. The number of people that recently have taken pictures of my banner and my QR codes rather than rather than actually taking the paper because they said the paper's just going to get lost is becoming more and more each event. So that's also in, also important that they have ways because not everybody can buy every book. Or never, and me too. I don't. I read eBooks nowadays. I'm not going to um, necessarily. Um, I'm not necessarily going to buy paperback books at events. I will take someone's bookmark. Or I will take a picture so I can remember, so I can read the read the eBook later. And people want, want audio books too. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the questions also, I had a great friend, Ben Reader, who's a big author, who, who I did an event with a number of years ago. And what he used to do at a convention is he used to ask people about their fandoms. And it really works. Mm. Like, what's your fandom? What do you like? And then what he would do is if the fandom matched his books, yeah, we'll go on and talk about his books. Match somebody else's books around. Go and say, well, maybe you'd like Debbie's books or maybe you'd like things based on what he's found out about them. And I, you know, I've started doing something like that too. Someone likes horror and I do an event recently with a, with a friend who's a horror writer. Well, maybe you want to go over there and check out his books instead, you know? But that's, so, a, that's a great tip, a great tip because you kind of get in. If, if it's not for you, then you have somebody you can pass them on to. So I right. like, I like that. Right, right. Um, Miss Lakeisha, we before I close it out, um, I just wanted to open it to you just in case you might have a little nugget you want to share. If not, we'll move on. <laughs> uh, n no, I haven't done any vendor events or anything like that. Um, I've done a bunch of podcasts, though. Again, mm -hmm. faith-based podcasts. Um, that's the other way I've, I've put out my um, the, the children books and stuff. Um, yeah, that's uh, thank you guys again for all the the, the knowledge nuggets. Um, as a as a newbie and um, it's, it's an honor to sit here amongst veterans. It's an honor. So gratitude for all your information. I, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for your service to our country. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Um, Lakeisha, don't say you just did podcasts because that's so important. Podcasts are so important. And a lot of people miss podcasts because they won't make time for it. But I always tell my clients to at least do one a month. So you have 12 for the year. And that is called evergreen content because it's there forever. People, I've, I've had I've, my first co uh, one I did in 2009. It's still out there. <laughs> so, that. so you, those podcasts are very good uh, things to do to introduce yourself to people because they don't know who you are. But once they get to know you through the podcast, then guess what they go do? They hit the buy button. <laughs> so. Oh. <laughs> well, well, to, to add on to that, then um, I would say because um, I've in um, over in UK, I've um, I've had a guy uh, promote my books and stuff over in UK on the radio show. Mm -hmm. So um, that was the other thing that I did. So since you said don't discredit it, I, I won't. I won't. So no, that's what I've done. You're introducing yourself to people that promotion worked. <laughs> yes, it worked. So thank you, ladies. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to listen to this because I couldn't write all my notes down. And, and go back through this because I mean you guys gave so many good good nuggets. Vent, the vending is really helpful. I knew I know that I don't care for vending, but I know it's something I have to do. And so I'm like Janet said, you get to learn how to be better at it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's what I want to do is learn how to be better. I want to sell more than one book. That's 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 my goal. <laughs> That's the goal, yeah. <laughs> Get past that one book. I've sold two. I think the most I've sold at vending was two books, and I'm like, uh, uh, 
I need to do a little better than this. You know? mm-hmm. so, um, but I'm learning, you know. So thank you so much. But before we get out of here, I want you all to each tell us how we can reach you online or offline or if you newsletters or whatever, tell us about that. And we're going to start with Miss PM and then we'll go with same way. Go ahead. TM. Yeah, so um, you can get to mine is the culturekids.com and it's K-T-H-E-K-U-L-T-R-E-K-I-D-Z.com, the culturekids.com. And I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook as Culture Kids Media. Hey, Miss Meg? I'm pretty much everywhere under my name, but just Meg Dendler, because put in the middle and there's too long <laughs> for the website. <laughs> so megdunler.com and I'm, oh Lordy, I'm everywhere. I'm on Instagram. I'm, I'm attempting TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a little old for TikTok, but you know, we're trying. Um, and I have a link tree link on my Instagram account where you can just pretty much find me anywhere. I have a square store for my books or there also everywhere. As many places as I can list them, I have them listed. Okay. Miss Jen. My website is myname.com. So it's all one word, JanetRuthHeller.com. So you could reach me that way. Um, I'm also active on Facebook, LinkedIn, and X. So you can also reach me through those social media. And I'd be glad to answer people's questions. Miss Lakeisha? Okay. Um, Miss Meg, don't feel bad about TikTok because I don't understand it either. So it's okay. And again, I'm 38, so it's okay. Um, but um, my uh, on Facebook, it's my actual name, Lakeisha Atchison, but um, I'm on Instagram as I am Creative Words. Um, the books are sold on Amazon under I am Creative Words. Uh, my website is I am Creative Words dot my dot Canva dot site. Um, I figured that out now. <laughs> um, so it's uh, it's available. Um, contact me anytime. I'm available. Thank you. Miss Debbie. Hi. Uh, yep. If pretty much the thing about using my full name, Debbie Mamba Cutford, which I didn't do originally. It was my original small press publisher that did that. And I'm stuck with it, basically. <laughs> um, but the advantage of that is if you just put my name in Google, you're going to find me everywhere. I have... A website at my name dot wordpress dot com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I I'm on YouTube. You know, you'll find me wherever you find me. Um, Am- Amazon page, Goodreads, whatever you want. And I'm always happy to answer questions. I'm also an editor. If you're looking for an editor, I also write custom puzzles. If you want puzzles for your website, or your books, or anything, um, message me. I could I can do all that. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Phyllis. Well, um, I have a first name that people have trouble spelling. But, <laughs> and my website is phyllisweeler.com. But uh, if you Google me, you'll find me. You'll find phyllisweeler.com. And I think uh, Google is forgiving about spelling variations. So that might be the best way to do it. But it's, it's phyllisweeler.com. That's, uh, I hope you'll come and sign up for my newsletter and that you will get on the bandwagon for hearing all about my series and, what, and what's coming and so on like that. Well, thank you, ladies. This has been amazing. As a newbie, soon to be middle grade writer, I just loved all the nuggets that you shared. I love that your experiences that you shared. And I want to say thank you so much for being part of the SORMED book festival. I truly appreciate you. And hopefully you might come back next year and share some more. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So did you get all those nuggets? I hope so. I hope you really did. I hope you got your, your notebook out and you're writing down all these different tips. I got so much stuff about the vending. I am ready for my next vending in 2024. I'm, I'm a fingers crossed. I'm going to do some vending next year. But um, we will be back at 9 p.m. Eastern for the romance panel. Last year, it was hot. I mean, it was hot. <laughs> so I don't know what to expect this year, but we got an amazing panel of women, different women writing different things. So come back and 
see us tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. And if you can't make it, then you can watch the replay. I will be putting it in the uh, book festival um, room. So check it out there. And if you have not been to the book festival, go check out the book festival. I got three more panels to put up and then everything will be loaded for today. And I hope you all are having fun and meeting people. Talk to the people who are there. See who is in your neck of the woods. You might be surprised. You might be connected to somebody that you didn't even know that was there. So go say hi to some people. And I will see you also inside the rooms too. So as I say, see you on the net. Talk to you later.